Hi guys. Um, some of you requested that it would be more engaging if my face was in it, so we're going to try. Um, here we go with the old school photo booth. So I'm going to talk a little bit about why the voice coil vibrates in a speaker system and how that important component plays a role in pushing sound waves specifically to our ears. So um, this animated diagram I think does a nice job of showing what it means to have an alternating current or an AC, you probably heard of AC, DC. AC is alternating current, DC is um, direct current. So alternating current means the flow of electrons or the flow of charges is flipping direction back and forth. So you can see the black arrows and the tan arrows flipping direction. You can also see from the terminals on the voice coil wire, um, they are switching positive on one end and then negative on the other, flipping back and forth. So alternating current comes from a wall outlet, it could come from power lines as well, um, from the audio signal in your phone that would also be an alternating current. Okay. So we have alternating current flipping current direction. If you have current, any current flowing through a wire, it's going to become magnetic. So it's either going to attract or repel from either another wire carrying current or another magnet. If you coil the wire, which most of you have done for your headphones, the magnetic field, or the force of the magnetism, becomes stronger in the middle of the coil. So in general, the more coils you have, the stronger the magnetic field will be. For So what the alternating current does is switch or flip what's called the polarity of the voice coil. So that might mean that if you look at this diagram, on the right, it might start as the north pole on the right, south pole on the left, and then it might flip to the south pole on the right, north pole on the left. So the alternating current flipping back and forth is going to also switch the polarity or the, where the north and south poles are aligned of the voice coil itself. In this diagram, it shows a donut magnet. So the magnet is kind of the black semicircle. In your headphones, your, ma your neodymium magnets are going to be called permanent magnets because um, they're permanently magnetic. That's not changing. Um, and But they're going to be smaller or inside the voice coil. It doesn't really make a difference for the production of sound for our case. Okay, so the neodymium magnets, um, it shouldn't really matter what the polarity is of those neodymium magnets. Most of you have two still in your little boxes. You'll notice that if you align them one way, they will attract very strongly. You might get your fingers pinched in there. That would mean the north and south poles are aligned. The opposite poles are aligned. If you have, if the, um, if you flip the, in the direction of the neodymium magnets, they might repel or push away from each other. It might be pretty hard to bring them together. That would mean that you have a north and north pole together or a south and south pole together. So the neodymium magnet itself is not going to vibrate. A um, few reasons, because A, it's a permanent magnet, and B, um, it's more massive, has more mass than our voice coil. So the spider helps keep the voice coil on the axis um, with the neodymium magnet as well. So recap. We have alternating current, switching direction in the wire. Wire carrying current creates magnetism. If that current is alternating direction, the polarity of the voice coil is going to flip back and forth. That will, in turn, make it attract and repel away from, away and towards the neodymium magnet or the permanent magnet. So that attraction and the repelling action will 
be the ultimate source of the vibration of the voice coil. We know that vibrations are the source of all sound waves, compressing air particles together and then spreading it, them out in areas of compression and rarefaction. The energy, in this case it's the acoustical energy, is going to transfer through the air into your ears. Okay, so it's transferring energy through air from originally the vibrations of the voice coil. Voice coil will in turn vibrate the diaphragm which will help push the um, air particles to your ear. If you had your same headphone set up in space, it would not work because there is no air in space. So sound needs a medium to travel through and in space that would not be the case. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Just watching this is not going to help you understand it. So go back, practice verbally explaining, practice with practice in the mirror, practice drawing a diagram, labeling, um, rewording, and you will be more successful on the oral quiz. Good luck.